Hey Booktube, it's David from Live Forever or Die Trying, and today I've got the video that was supposed to cap off my 1,000 subscriber special, posting seven videos every other day. And it's a little behind, forgive me for that. Random right? some hiccups with um, corrupted files and editing and what have you. But here we are. So I felt it was only appropriate to do my Booktube Newbie Tag 2.0, kind of after this big milestone. So you may remember my newbie tag was just in January of this year. I actually posted my first video January of 2019, and then I posted two other videos in 2019, but I never really was part of the booktube community. So January of this year, just eight months ago, was kind of my first proper attempt to get involved with you guys and you know join the community full force. So that's been kind of crazy because like eight months and a thousand subscribers is kind of wild. And as of filming this, we're at 1125 or something. So the support's kind of incredible and you guys are blowing me away. Um, every day I'm enjoying reading and responding to new comments, checking out other videos and just, it's awesome. I don't know really what to say. Just it's getting me more involved in reading and I hope that by making these videos, I'm getting you more involved in reading as well. And yeah. I look forward to doing more. But without further ado, let's jump into the booktube newbie tag 2.0. So the first question is kind of, uh, you're gonna know the answer. So the question is, what genres would you like to see talked more about on booktube? Any guesses? I'm gonna say nonfiction. But to give you um, kind of a real answer, um, there's a lot of channels that I found, I think I'm subscribed to like 55 now that do nonfiction. And there's some really good ones, like Justin at Triumphal Reads, who's covering a lot of history and nature writing. Olive of a Book Olive, who covers nature writing as well, but also like Russian history. That's like kind of sweet. Uh, we have Peg at the History Shelf. Steve Donahue goes over a lot of classics and nonfictions and whatnot. Um, and yeah, there's just a ton of people that are doing a lot of different nonfiction work. Uh, but to give you kind of a real answer, I wish to see more of a subgenre of like science and, you know, like the biological, you know, aging related stuff, obviously that's my answer, but it'd be cool to have a few more people that are in that sub niche of this already pretty small niche. Second question, how do you feel is the best way to make friends on booktube? Um, honestly, I think it's pretty straightforward. Just get involved, you know? Um, I think one of the best ways is to do tags, you know, get people in their mentions and, you know, interact directly that way. But also, like, just jump into people's comments, you know, ask them questions, ask for advice, and just get involved, and then these kind of relationships develop naturally. I wouldn't force anything, you don't want to be inauthentic, but if you just get involved, you know, say you like a video when you like a video, or how'd you film that, or where'd you get this idea, or what have you, you'll start developing those conversations that will eventually lead to friendships and getting more involved. Question three. What do you enjoy most about making booktube videos? And my biological answer is the dopamine hit every time somebody likes, comments, or subscribes. So you can keep me going by doing that now. Um, but no, realistically, like for a serious answer, why I actually like making the videos, like community aside, because community is awesome and like what happens after making the videos is sweet in that regard, like being able to converse about the books and have those relationships in this community is cool. But making the videos themselves, my favorite part is kind of the solidification of ideas and kind of learning through teaching. So I've mentioned this before, I think maybe in my newbie tag video, when I'm reading a book, knowing that it's gonna go on YouTube, I'm reading it more thoroughly, maybe a little bit slower, but I'm trying to retain the information better. I'm making notes, um, proposing questions to myself to come back with and being more thorough because I know I have to write a script or talk about it later. later. So that solidification of ideas through knowing that I'm gonna post about it is kind of really advantageous for like my recall of what I'm reading. Question four, what do I at least look forward to when making YouTube videos? You know what the first thing I'm gonna do when I hit reach 100K subscribers is? Hire an editor. I cannot tell you how frustrating it is filming for 30 minutes and then realizing the focus was too soft or the lighting wasn't good or background noise is blowing up my audio. The editing and cleaning up of the footage is kind of like the most frustrating thing. And I already try to keep it simple. I try to just, you know, 
get good focus with good natural lighting and just talk. And even then I'm still editing for like an hour or two after each like 20 minute video. But yeah, that is what drives me crazy is whenever I think I have some really good content coming for you and a cloud comes through and it's like five shades too dark or ugh. But yeah, that's my least favorite part by a mile. Easy, no comparison. I, can't, I couldn't think of another thing to add to this answer because this is just stuck out. And then we get to question number five, hopefully less heated, is what videos other than tags, TBRs, wrap-ups, reviews, and recommendations would you like to see more of? I'm gonna preface this answer by saying that I'm forced to answer this because those videos are what they are because of what they do. And what I mean by that is they're the most viewed content and probably the most valuable. You know, we're here for book recommendations, book reviews, what we read, keeping up with each other. So I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with that. Now, personally, I like novelty, so I'm doing like starter pack videos and what have you. But I would just like to see more novel ideas in general. I wouldn't like to see less of those things, but more of a few other things, like maybe like walking vlogs or something like that. Um, now, one thing I saw that was really cool recently was uh, American Book Dragon took her like collection of like Indian history books and Indian wars and sorted them chronologically. And different books like that were like reading list, you know, like if you're into this subject or you want to learn about conservation or what have you, read these X books for these reasons. I like that kind of stuff, um, but I wouldn't want to see less of tags, wrap ups, reviews, recommendations. And then we get to number six, which is what themes would I like to see less of in books? And honestly, I think this is a question for fiction readers um, because nonfiction, I don't really have big overarching themes or like storytelling aspects or what have you. I feel like this question was made for the videos that's like tropes I hate about this or authors, please stop doing this. And I don't know if it's applicable to nonfiction. It probably is, but I just don't have a good answer. Um, I will say my pet peeve right now is books with, in my opinion, misleading subtitles, like exploration into the wonder of consciousness on a book that doesn't even talk about consciousness. I'm like, but really that's all I got. For number seven, we have booktube goals and what mine are. So I've mentioned it before. I try not to take this too seriously because I know that I would lead to burnout. I'm a pretty goal-oriented guy. I have sales numbers that I want to reach at work that are self-imposed. I have like skills that I want to uh, develop on my own, like learning a slack line, you know, hitting a certain rating of difficulty when climbing. And I try to keep them all pretty level because I know if I stack too many goals in a certain sector, I will just look at them, interpret it as like undoable, and it will kill my motivation. So I'm gonna stick right now to reading a book a week, and that's kind of my hard, fast goal. Now, other than that, it would be cool to get this channel to a point where nonfiction authors would like me to review their books or like advanced reader copies, or eventually just do like a little bit of monetization to the point where I can cover the cost of buying the books I'm buying. Like, I think that would be sweet. It's not something that I'm actively chasing, um, like it'd be cool to get like affiliate links going and everything. I just haven't had the energy to sit down and do it. And I think one of the other things that I really don't want to do is like lose authenticity. Like I know personally that like I wouldn't sell out and give a book a glowing review just because I was getting paid for it. But inherently, when you do start accepting money, people get that perception. Like you see it with like some of my favorite medical doctors like Peter Atia. He had like 200,000 followers on his podcast before he even started doing discount codes for like uh, supplements and different stuff, just because he was so terrified about getting that perception and losing that credibility. So that's something I'm gonna be thinking more about in the future and I'll see if it works out, bring you along and I'm gonna try to be really transparent about that process. If it ends up actually making money, I think it'd be a cool series of videos too, kind of, you know, show what's under the hood. Like if you're trying to make booktube a career, you know, this is what to do. Here's how you can make the most money on this. But I don't want that to be in the spotlight. I don't want it to be the forefront of like why I'm doing this. Uh, but yeah, stretch goal might not happen. We'll see. Then we have question eight, which is what advice would you give to a booktuber that has just created their channel? 
This is going to be a little bit boring, but my real good advice is participate. Like, it's basically a big book club, you know, so read what you want to read, post authentically about your thoughts and what videos you would have liked to see, and you're going to get interaction. You know, do some tags, um, mention some other creators, get in their comment sections, just literally have fun with it. If you're like authentic and you're having a good time, people are going to watch what you're doing. And yeah, it's pretty straightforward, but really that's all I got for it. Just have fun with it. Number nine, which is what are some qualities or traits you would like? What are some qualities or traits that you would look out for when it comes to watching other booktubers? And to me, I look for similarities. So kind of the reason I started this channel in the first place, or at least got more involved on in my newbie tag is because I was searching for nonfiction books, specifically ones in science. And there wasn't another channel that I could find that was making enough content that I was consuming. Like I found Olive right off the bat, but she wasn't posting regularly enough that I could log on every two or three days when I got that itch. So that's kind of what led me to, you know, getting more involved in this channel, like from the beginning. And if you're making the content you want to see and it's genuine content, I think people are going to like it. And yeah, I mean, you just let your personality shine through. And if it's a hit, it's a hit. It's not uncommon that I actually go to the, uh, the search bar on YouTube. I type in nonfiction books and I type in booktube newbie tags and I'll do this like three times a week. I'll change the, uh, the filter and search by most recent post and I'll just go through, you know, 10 or 20 videos, see who's posting in my niche and then see who's just joining the community in general. So just get yourself out there and have fun with it. And then finally, we're going to wrap it up with number 10, which is what is a fun fact about you or a hobby besides reading and writing on booktube that you, that they might not. Wow. What is a fun fact about you or a hobby besides reading or writing that people on booktube might not know you have? And spoiler, if you've seen my Instagram, but like I'm big into like adventure sports. So hiking, rock climbing, surfing, scuba diving. Uh, I've jumped out of airplanes and just kind of thrill-seeking in general. Eventually, and I know I'm not supposed to make this a booktube question, but I want to incorporate this, you know, kind of bring all my interests together. And like, I kind of did it with the Honduras video with like octopi, climate change, and mermaids, where I try to read a selection of books kind of to enhance uh, like a travel log type of thing. And I would like to do more of that, but it's kind of tricky. Like, I mean, I guess I could do like a hiking vlog or something. I don't know. If you guys have any opinions or tips for that, let me know, because that is something I actively want to do. Um, but yeah. And yeah, that's the questions. Um, so this technically wraps up my 1K subscriber special. I might do another series of uh, videos like this once I hit 2K, if we get there. I'm hoping we will, we'll see. But um, yeah, it's somewhat surprising. I posted seven videos in two weeks. And I at the beginning of this, I thought I would probably like get sick of it or see it as a chore. But it's been kind of thrilling and I'm surprised at the lack of burnout. Like maybe if I kept this going longer, I would hit more burnout. But even now, like I'm filming this video today and I have four more videos scripted. Um, including wrap-ups, new hauls, and then themed videos as well that I still have to film. So even though I've done these seven, I still have more on the radar that I'm kind of itching to get at. And that's before, you know, other wrap-ups come into play and other TBRs and whatnot. So I'm really excited for like what's coming down the pipeline. And, and I'm just excited to see what everything brings moving forward. But yeah, um, in typical YouTube fashion, I'm going to close by asking for subscriptions, likes, and dopamine. If you would, please leave those down below. It can help a starving addict. <laughs> See you guys around. Bye-bye.